Yobachi 2007 back at you with another one. So you know we've been dissecting this Jeezy and Jeannie Mai situation and analyzing the dissolution of their marriage and what's and, and getting into understanding about who Jeannie Mai is so brothers can get an understanding of why you can't take uh, old modern women who are stuck in their ways and women who have uh, a lot of damage and a, a lot of uh, kind of past traumas and think that you can change them because you're so alpha or the power of your love and somehow they're going to be a different person than who they've always been. And we've been on it like we own it over here, starting with a, an introduction to Jeannie Mai and seeing how she treated and talked about her first husband and how she played him out in multiple ways, even on national television. And then from Jeannie's own words, uh, that was from Jeannie's own words. We've been listening to her talk about the trauma she went through, about her broken relationship with her mother, which probably led to her not having motherly instinct and nurturing instincts herself. And just more about her talking about how she saw herself and me, 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 and how she planned a life centered around herself. Um, so let's we're going to pick up back up on that conversation that we looked at that we uh, left off of in the last video. Not even a conversation, but uh, her monologue. Before we do that, if you will hit the like button. Like me up real quick. I'll really appreciate it. And with that, we're going to get right into this video. But make sure you hit that like. When Jeezy and I first met, you know that we had an amazing journey dating each other and getting to know each other. And one of the first things that we talked about was whether or not we wanted to have children. He was very upfront about the fact that he had already had two beautiful children. And I was really upfront about the fact that I didn't want children. We both were really okay being two grown adults in our 40s dating and not wanting children. In fact, it seemed relieving that there was no pressure on either side. So that was our plan. As you know, you're always going to have plans. And then God reminds you who's in charge, right? I actually found it unbelievable that I had met a man that totally invigorated my senses, emotionally, mentally, physically, and also was okay with not having children. Because for me, when it came to dating, it's very important to me, maybe essential, that you manage expectations. I don't ever want to mislead people. When Jeezy and I moved forward, something started to change very quickly. I kept it to myself. I didn't say anything to him about it because I didn't know exactly what it was. I just began to fall into a love with Jeezy that I had never experienced before. And this love opened up visions and dreams of things I wanted to do with him that I never pictured doing. Building a future, building a family. This lady was married for 10 years to a guy she was with for a total of 13 years. Never was in love. Never thought about a future with him. Never thought about building a family. And so, again, what I want to present to you fellas, I want you guys to understand. You see the soft and elegant presentation. You see an Eastern looking woman. You see a nice soft seeming disposition what you have is a western modern woman to the hilt who is about her and she does not really concern herself too strongly with the man she's engaging with a woman will come into your life will accept marriage proposal from you while never seeing you as really the guy her first husband, Freddie, 13 years, just a guy. Didn't really love him that much. She, uh, He didn't make, make her feel the way Jesus supposedly is making her feel. And therefore, she didn't see fit to give him a family. Even when she, we can watch some video clips of her uh, talking about on The View, on The Real, about how she started to see that he really did want children but she wasn't moved by it. <laughs> she said, I, ain't, I wasn't feeling a thing. And so the love that he gave her, she also says he was a great man. He's the greatest man she knows. But he still wasn't worthy of giving a family to. And again, as we always say, the rules are different for Chad and Tyrone. But nonetheless, what we also have to understand is the same 
representative that she sent to Jeezy after she got rid of the man she was with for 13 years, who was a great man, but not good enough for her to fully give herself to and not really, and who she really didn't want just because you get her titillated as the alpha. Who she is is who she is. And your and your love isn't going to be powerful enough to make her have a nurturing and caring sense that she doesn't have. And we're going to see how that plays out in another piece of video. But let's listen to some more of this first. Building the type of childhood and the type of freedom and love that we didn't always have as kids in someone new. When I spoke to Jeezy and I told him that I see something different with him. I see building with him. I see building a family with him. We both had mutual dreams where we saw little ones running around us. And the great thing is I feel so safe in my relationship with Jeezy that I can talk to him about this. And we both can gingerly hold each other and walk ourselves through the steps to heal so that we can prepare ourselves for what we want to bring to this table when it comes to family. 13 years would it do. The point I'm making about that is you have to really examine these women before you bring them into your life and really understand who they are and what they're about. And again, not just take a nice disposition and a pleasant uh, presentation and think that that's it and that's femininity and that you're going to get true caring and love because you have these women who are really holding back who they are, waiting to jump off the train. The same thing with Tia Maori, who is the twin sister of the other Maori who's on the reel with, with Jeannie Mai. Just left her husband out of the blue for no apparent reason. She just graduated from the marriage. That's it. Just, just no reason. Guy didn't cheat, didn't beat her, was a great father, still is a great father, but he's not worth being with. You have to understand for these modern minded women, they will use you as a starter man, just like a starter house. And be ready to rock off with and just take your kids, cut your heart in half. And if you happen to make more money than them, they'll take all your money, too, and won't care that you didn't do anything to them. But they'll ruin your life when they get ready. So now let's see how Jeannie ch treats her alpha, her alpha Tyrone Jeezy who make her feel and titillated her and has, she has so much love for him. Does that mean a modern woman has respect for a man, even if she has love for him? Let's listen to the Sunday Omni show. And it is just the mother. The mother disrespected Jeannie Mai's husband in his own home. Okay. Um, she flew in without notice. Jeezy did not know that she was coming to his place or their place. Um, Jeannie did not tell Jeezy this. And Jeezy pretty much was, um, you know, home alone. He was, Jeannie wasn't there, okay? So I'm just giving you guys the back story. He was home alone, and when he's at home, he likes to wear, you know, shorts and stuff like that, you know, in the comfort of his house, okay? Mama, my you know, comes there with five luggages, um, her wigs, uh, her shoes, and she starts using Jeezy's uh, closet. She noticed that he had a very big closet and stuff like that, so she thought that she can start putting all her shoes and everything, her wigs, her clothes, and everything in this man's closet. So he calls Jeannie and says, how long is your mom going to be here? Then Jeannie says, I don't know, probably just a couple days, you know, a couple days or maybe a week. And then Mama Mai never left. The same woman who wouldn't protect Jeannie as a child getting molested by her older male cousin. The same woman who we showed you in this video right here saying, telling Jeannie, I didn't believe you. Told her at the time she's a child, telling her mom how her, her cousin is undressing her and touching her. I don't believe you. That woman is who she plays her husband out for. She's going to play her husband out to move this woman into his house. Now, here's what they'll try to say. Here's what the 
the Jeannie Mai, the modern women defenders are trying to say. The same ones who rag on passport bros for going and getting foreign women in other countries and, and deride their culture and how those women are. Well, in, in foreign, for, uh, for a Vietnamese family, that's just their culture. Their, their parents live with them and blah, 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 blah. Okay, check this. Jeannie Mai's mom didn't live with her for the last 13 years when she was with the other man. In, in the in the two or three years, however many years in between, when Jeannie was by herself after she got divorced and before she married Jeezy, her mom was not living with her. She's moving up into the into the boss baller's crib. You see, Jeezy got the ill crib. Mama Ma want to live like Jeezy. She want to live that baller life. You see, she got the blue hair. She was a traditional Vietnamese woman, but... She's been in America long enough now. Now she's a modern American woman herself. And she wants to come up in his house and live in the fly crib because she wants to, she wants the crib. And she came in this man's house and took over this man's house. And Jeannie lied about her coming for a minute and let her mom and then her brother move up in this man's house. While half the time Jeannie, Jeannie's house is in Atlanta. Jeannie works in LA. Jeannie is from LA. Well, she, I think she's from San Jose, but whatever. She's, she's from Cali. She works in L.A. She lives there half the time. And she got this woman and her brother living up in this man's crib. Without even asking. Without even giving notice. That's how her love and affection moves. Because that so-called love, which is just about a feeling, doesn't come with respect. Because it's not in her to respect a man. That's why she went on TV and called her first husband a Mitch to the world. That's why she used family vacations and uses her husband as like her, her personal assistant, Cabana Boy, to do her photo shoots when they're supposed to be having personal time on vacation and posting their life all on the internet. And she uh, But yeah, on, she basically it took wasn't over his until... All on this channel of hers. And Hello, honey. Oh, so annoying. Her whole life is on this channel as well. And G's ain't about having his whole life in front of the camera and having his house taken over by this woman he barely knows without his permission, without even talking to him about it. That's what you get with a, a, a woman who is not an actual traditional woman, but who can just send a nice representative and talk all the talk about her love and caring, but doesn't really have that in her. This is why you have to really examine these women before you bring them in your life and before you bring them in your house, because this is what they're going to bring in your house right behind them. Because she doesn't have respect. She doesn't have respect. That's modern women for you. Hit the like button, please. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell to come back for more. Like me up. Yobachi 2007. Mouth.